want to go to Sinabang to Nabako Sinabang Manda with Parliament. We have appointed us to this government member with Parliament because you trusted us, O oh Lord. O oh, you will serve your people truthfully and with dignity and with love. Thank you for taking care of and our whole families. Amen. 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 Eh, Okay. Um, Honorable Mpiti. Hi, Chair. I am here. Okay. Honorable Mopo. Hi, Chair. Gikona. Honorable Sharif. Hi, Chair. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, who else is not here? Mam Mam Kaula. Mam Sonti, what's Mam Kaula? Um, kuno mila na yepi for wangu mtosa zoza mukge na angiazo te wakona nukge na che. Okay, can Aboneliswa check if he, if she's able to log in? Okay, hello. Um, good afternoon, members. Good afternoon, Chair. Um, Mam Kaula just called me to say she won't be able to attend. She's, oh. I think she's in a clinic. Yes, my child is not feeling well. And oh. I also, yeah, and I also have apology for Mamu Strongo. She's also not going to be able to attend today's meeting. And Mkweba uh, will join the meeting later. Oh, okay. No, we can start. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Honorable. No, no, Vula. No, Vula. Hi, Chair. Can we start? Yes, we can start because I think you do correct. It's about seven members. So okay. you can start, Chairperson. Okay, thank you very much. Sure, thanks. Um, good afternoon, honorable members. Uh, I declare this meeting official. Uh, I know that uh, Honorable Strongo, Honorable Stay Strongo, has got a problem. Uh, she called me in the morning. I was trying to assist her. So I'm sure she's not finished yet. So that's why, for sure, she's not going to be able to attend the meeting. Uh, today's meet, uh, uh, meeting, it's not going to be long because we are only dealing with our committee report. Uh, if you can look at the agenda, I'm trying to open the agenda now. Let's go to the agenda. Do you have the agenda before you? Honorable member, do you have the agenda? Yes, Chair. Do you have the agenda? Yes, we do. Okay. I say we have. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, we have. Okay. The items are only three. It's, there's only one item, in fact. It's consideration and adoption of the committee report on strategic plan of the Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities, and also uh, including the NYTA. CGE on the budget vote that uh, uh, budget vote thirteen. So what I will do, uh, I think uh, with regards to the approaches, those are the only 
two apologies that you are having, your honorable song and uh, honorable mam kaula and otherwise we are continuing to continue with our meeting Okay. Um, hello, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I just want to be clear about this uh, budget vote. Is yeah. it budget vote number 13 or budget vote number 20? Budget vote number 13. Okay. Yeah. But call number 20, call number 20. Yes. <coughs> okay. What are you doing? So I want to tell you I was asking even Uneli Sokoti, what is the name of this budget? Is it twenty or thirteen? So just confused about that. But it, it was before you entered. Okay. Let me show you. Yeah, Ibon. Yes. Can you clarify us? Um. Afternoon, members. Um. Are you able to hear me? Yes. yes. Um, yes. Afternoon, Chairperson and members. Just to let you know, last year the ENE said vote 13, but our expenditure for national estimates for 2020 has indicated that our vote this year is vote 20. So the correct vote is vote 20. Last year it was 13, but for this year it's vote 20. Uh. Thank you very much, Kashifa. Thank you, Mam Sonti. Uh, because even myself, I thought it, we are still on 13. Maybe the 20 is a, 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 is a mistake. So now, if you clarify us like that, uh, it's okay. But have they changed their strategic uh, uh, plans and their APP that is for its budget vote 20? Yes, Chairperson, they have. So it's in accordance with the ENE, which is vote 20. Oh, okay. Okay, can we move on? Um, this is the only thing eh, that we are going to discuss for today. Can Kashifa, yeah, can you take us through the report? Um, I, I take it that honourable members, because you have received this uh, report, the draft report, and then what we need from you is that uh, I'm sure by last week, uh, or Saturday over the weekend, Ukashifa have circulated the report to yourselves so that you can make inputs on other things that maybe are not captured in the report. Uh, you will see as as she is going to present that there are other things that we have added in the report uh, yesterday. And I'm sure, Kashifa, as you are going to read, you are going to highlight to members things that we, we have uh, 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 added in, in, into, the, into the report. But I think yeah, the other thing that we have done, honorable members, is uh, regarding the questions. If you remember, during the portfolio committee meeting, the department did not answer most of the questions. So what we have done, we have sent you a, 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 not, a, a, a communique to say maybe if honourable members, we, during the time of the portfolio committee meeting, when they were uh, uh, answering the questions, they have been asked your question, please rewrite it down so that we can forward to them. But what, what we have done, we have taken all the, uh, the questions because... Most of the questions that they were responding to, they were not answered uh, 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 adequately ne? or satisfactory. So what we've done, we have redrafted those questions. And uh, I'm sure, Kashifa, you have circulated them to the members. And then what we have done, we have the questions that we have drafted, we have circulated to members. And uh, this is what we have submitted to the department. We have taken all the questions, in fact, so that they can write it down in detail exactly what is it that they have done and what is it that they are going to do. Remember, even with the mandate issue, 
have raised it and uh, we have uh, also written a question on the mandate of the department vis-a-vis -vis their strategic plan and their APP. So uh, if you look at your, your, your questions and the report, you will see uh, that uh, there are other things that we, have, we are going to raise as concerns. Uh, but also we are expecting an honorable members, Guti, uh, it's not a casting stone. You can also add other concerns that you have so that uh, we can put them in our report. I hope uh, that is clear. I get a response from honorable members. Honorable Masiko. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I think we, we, we did receive the, the reports as well as the questions oh, okay. uh, well in advance, Chair. And um, yeah, we thank you. Okay. okay. Honorable Mpiti. Honorable Mpiti. Honorable Mpiti. Hi, Chair. I don't know if you, you can hear me. I'm just struggling with, with the internet connection. Um, what I wanted to say, Chair, was that we, we did receive uh, the draft committee report, um, and we did also receive the questions that uh, Gashifa had sent to, to, to us for comment. Um, and we've decided as the, 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 the DA uh, committee members that we are very happy with the, the submission, so that is completely fine. The only thing, Chair, that we, we just need some clarity on is on the rec recommendations of this particular report. Um, we will be able to amend uh, some of those rec recommendations. Is that correct? Or, or, yes. Or how do you yes. Continue? Yes. Thank you. you are going to amend. Remember, this is the draft that we have done on behalf of the committee. So today's meeting is about that, that you engage with the report and tell us where you want us to make changes. Or you, you want us to where you want us to amend and maybe put another recommendation it's up to the members but what do we do we present the whole draft to members so that members can engage in each and on, in each and everything that we have written you are free to engage with the report and also tell us what is it that we need to add it's not the one man's show it's the the report it must be our report I think that answers your question, ne? Honorable Peter. Honorable Peter. Thank you. Okay, that is that is very much in order. The last thing that I just need. Chair, can you hear me? You, chair, I can chair. hear you, but I'm struggling. It's fine. Yeah, can you, you can you can speak. You can talk, Honorable Mpiti. Yeah, he's struggling. He's struggling, ne? Honorable chair, Sheriff. Yeah, I can hear chair, you now. Chair. Yes. yes. The, the last point that I just wanted to mention is that we were sent a draft statement and I just wanted to know whether we'll be given an opportunity in the duration of this meeting to discuss uh, the statement uh, that was sent to us uh, for input. Thank you. Okay, it's fine. Which honorable MPT? Mpiti. Honorable Sheriff. Yes, um, yes. Oh, yes, 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 he's back now. Um, Honorable this Mpiti. This really Honorable Mpiti. Hey, you are struggling, ne? The statement relates to uh, our comment as a committee 
on um, the, the, the sexist remarks uh, that were made against uh, the, the minister. And so we've seen the statement. And so I wanted to know whether we will be given an opportunity to give inputs on that statement, because I think we, we do hold very strong views uh, on that matter. And I think we need to be given an opportunity as the committee to, to go through that statement and ensure that it speaks uh, to, to the concerns uh, that the, co the committee finds. Thank you. Yo, Mpiti, you should have done that yesterday. I, remember, I send it to you. You know, when I send something to you, ne, honorable members, if you don't respond, we continue. So with that one, we have already issued that segment. That's why I sent you the draft. Uh, in the morning, uh, I sent you at night, ne? on Thursday night, uh, on Monday night, well, well, today is Tuesday, I think I sent it to you yesterday, if not Sunday. Ashifa, when did we write it? Um, Chair, it was issued this morning and finalized yesterday. Yes, we finalized it yesterday, because you were not commenting. So um, maybe uh, the second one that we are going to, the, the second one that we want to issue is the one of alcohol. So I think even that one is circulated uh, to members. That is the one that you need to uh, um, circulate to, to make your comments because this one already is we have circulate we have issued it out. It's out now. <coughs> Name it. I'm sorry. Okay. T -t -t Thanks, Chairperson. Mm. Hey, Kulan, alcohol, ne? Yeah. And the full of things are like a cool Chairperson. In the alcohol, if you go cool, you go see if you legile from yesterday. Even today, before I come um to this meeting, I was having a case. Emma Lunga, Nenda Bayojoala. By a Fugunezo, I want to be smart, eh, Chaperson. As a Pumlang, as Pumli. I have even the photos, Zonduana or Betra, Indo Dangoba, Isele Uchoala. Just yesterday, Chaperson. That first June yesterday. Okay. I see Bambela, okay, Mam Sonti, a sitting report, and then we'll deal with the, the, the that one. Sure. All right. on, on, thank you, Mam Sondi. We will deal with that one because I, Kashifa, I hope even this one it, it, it circulated to members before, ne? Um, Chair, I will ensure the that draft, um, your Lisa yeah, sends it. Yeah. Uh, 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 the draft, uh, because they, they must make input also. If they don't make inputs today, that means we'll uh, 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 issue what we have. Honorable Masigo, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I would request that if they can, if they are able to send it to us during the meeting, so we can also quickly go through it, so we can in in the discussion after the the report. Okay. Uh, I, I think Kashifa, can you please circulate that that draft statement to all the members, so that uh, at least it must be the last one after we were done with the, our report, ne? Because once you don't come back to me, to us, uh, with comments, we take it with Kushuti and right and if you So, So, um, so that that one of, of, of yesterday, uh, it's issued, it's out, so it's no longer going to be useful for, for us to, to discuss about it because it's out already. So, the second one. Uh, is the one a alcohol? It's 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 a draft. Uh, at least that one you still have a chance that you can make inputs as honourable members, so that uh, by end of business today tonight we are done with that one. So, but now let's go to the report itself, and then um, members can add our concerns. Mam Sonti, our concerns on now. Ofunuwa fag ngawafag. 
Google report based on the reports. If the report I cover is into mchambe is zinye, it's balang. So no mamsheng wa, you are still a, a, a welcome to it. <laughs> okay, over to you, Kashifa. Thank you, Chair. So, um, as Chairperson has indicated, um, this is the report um, of the Portfolio Committee on Women, Youth and Persons Disabilities on the Strategic Plan 2020 20 to 25, the Annual Performance Plan in terms of the Budget Vote 20, 20 of the Department, the Commission for Gender Equality, and the National Youth Development Agency <laughs> Financial Year 2021. Um, as Chairperson has just indicated, the report has been circulated to members. Um, the first section of the report um, covers the background information and um, mandate of the department, um, uh, as well as the expenditure trends and medium term priorities, all of which have been covered in the briefings um, to members, as well as in the documents prepared by the researchers. Um, what I will do, Chairperson, um, with your permission, is to go straight to the observations and recommendations um, and detailed uh, what we have covered um, there based on the interactions members had, both the department, the NYDA and the CGE. So I will move straight to the observations and recommendations. Um, I'm just moving the one uh, moment. But it, uh, that does not mean uh, honorable members cannot talk to uh, 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 the pages that uh, we are going to jump now. Okay. Yeah. Um, but so what is what is critical? Um, it's you are moving to which page? Um, I was going to move straight to the um, observations and recommendations, Chairperson. Why don't you start with number four, analysis of the budget? Sure. I think that one is important for us. And then uh, go to the, the, the recommendations. Sure. Okay, so I'll start with uh, number four and then move to um, number nine, which is the recommendations. So moving back up to number four. Chairperson. Hello. Yes, sir. I think maybe if she can start with number four, as you are saying, but then go back to observations because that's where we have concerns as committee members. Before she can go to recommendation, we must get our observation so that the, rec the observation will inform obs uh, recommendation. We must not skip observation. Yeah, obviously she can't go to recommendations before the observation. I take it that she's going to do that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, because how are we going to work with the recommendations if we did not uh, deal with the observations? I think, Kashifa, that one is clear, eh? Yeah, no problem. So we will do four, eight, nine, um, and then conclusion. So in terms of the analysis of the budget 2020-2021 for the department, According to the estimates of national expenditure for 2020, the department received a budgetary allocation of just over 778 million for the financial year, of which there are two transfers. So the first transfer is 89.9 million for the Commission for Gender Equality, and then to the National Youth Development Agency, which is um, 478 million. So together, those transfers amount to just over 568 million. So when we exclude those transfers, the department is left with an operating budget of 209.9 million um, in order to take its programs and meet its 33 targets for the year. So in a nutshell, the department has an operating budget of 209.9 million and they've set aside 33 targets for the 2020-21 financial year. 
The, the ENE, which is the estimates for national expenditure for 2020, indicates that the department is set to receive additional allocations in Program 2, which is Social Transformation and Economic Empowerment Program, amounting to 50 million over the medium term for the establishment of a National Council on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide. So in terms of the key cost drivers, um, based on the department's operating budget, 57.7%, which is, amounts to over 121 million, is for compensation of employees. And then goods and services um, amounts to 84.8 .8 million, which amounts to 40.4%. With regards to our spending in terms of goods and services, the key cost drivers are Travel and subsistence, 19.5. Property payments, 18.8 million. Uh, we're spending on consultants, 15.5 million. So these three items account for 63.4% of the goods and services budget. Um, the other expenditure items under goods and services um, includes venues, which amounts to 5.4 million, and then expenditure for external audit costs, which is 4.3 million. Crystal had outlined this in detail in her budget vote report um, to members. In terms of the key cost drivers, they remain fairly consistent between the previous financial year 1920 and the current financial year 2021. Compensation of employees sees an increase of 8.7 million between the two financial years and goods and services 9.3 million. Travel and subsistence has decreased by 4.5 million. Property, property payments um, increased by a million. So the allocation for consultants increased by 8.2 million, which is more than doubled compared to the previous financial year, which is 1920. So when we look at what the department is spending in terms of human resources, whether it's internal or sourcing externally via consultants, they will be spending an additional 16.9 million. Um, and then, as noted, the external costs increased by 1.1 million. So what we've done in Table 3 is just to highlight to members, again, comparing the previous financial year to the current financial year in terms of the key cost drivers, which I had just noted through now. So when we remove the CGE and the NYDA transfer payment from the allocation, we noted previously um, the operating budget is 209.9 million. So there's a nominal increase of 16.7 million compared to the previous financial year. Program 2 was allocated 7.2 million more than 1920 when we the transfer allocation is removed from the program budget. So in other words, when we just look at what the department is spending on program 2, besides the CHE, they got 7.2 million and more. Program 3 is, uh, also has a nominal increase of 5.7 million. Program 4, 1.1, and Program 5, 2.7. And bearing in mind that with Program 5, there's a transfer to the NYDA. So again, with Table 4, this just provides members with a, a synopsis of these are five programs comparing over the medium term 1920 to 2022-23. Um, the amounts in brackets are the transfers. So for under program two, that's the transfer to the CGE, and under program five, that would be the transfer to the NYDA. So in terms of human resources, the 2020 estimates of national indi um, expenditure indicate that the department has a planned staff complement of 154 persons for 2020-21. This is two more than the previous financial year. The greatest proportion of personnel is in the administration program, which is 67 staff members, or 49% of the overall staff complement, amounting to 56 million of the budget for compensation of employees. Program 2 has 21 employees, Program 3, 35, Program 4, 14, and Program 5, 8 employees. In terms of expenditure of compensation of employees, the greatest proportion of staff which is 48, fall within the level 13 to 16 salary band, which is senior management. So that comes at a combined cost of 58.7 million, and the unit cost on average amounts to 1.2 million per person. 
In terms of the department's human resource capacity, the department submitted the following table in its presentation to the Committee on the Strategic Plan, an APP. So when they presented, they noted to the committee how many posts that were filled within each program and what the funded vacancies were and what the total posts were as outlined in Table 5. The department indicated that approved a post establishment as for the table reflects only funded posts as no unfunded posts have been approved. Currently, there are 27 vacancies against the startup organizational structure and post establishment of the department. However, in the strategic plan, the following was noted. Currently, the department has 101 funded posts, of which 93 are filled and 8 vacant. This will be augmented to the end mark 2019 process where 15 funded posts, 11 filled and 4 vacant have been ring-fenced by DSD, which is the Department of Social Development, um, 8 by the DPME, 7 filled and 1 vacant. Accordingly, the startup structure of the department will have a post establishment of 124 posts. So there's a discrepancy between the 130 full posts in the presentation versus the 93 in the strategic plan and the 154 in the NE2020. So we just need to understand between what's stipulated in the ENE, what occurs in the strategic plan, and what they presented to us. What is the current staff establishment? How many posts have been filled? And how many are vacant? Um, Chairperson, would you like me to move now straight to observations? Yeah, something is not right here. Uh, repeat what you are saying. You, they are saying they have filled 130 posts. Yes, Chair. So what we're finding is in the ENE, they've given us one indication as to how many posts there are. In the strategic plan, as highlighted on page 9 in italics, They've given us an indication of the funded posts. When they presented to us, uh, that's the, the table five, um, they gave us an indication of 157 uh, posts in total, of which 130 was filled. So therefore, we're saying there's a discrepancy between what occurs um, in these three key areas, the ENE, the strategic plan, and in the presentation. So we just need um, clarity from the department in this regard. We know that um, personnel have moved from DSD as well as DPME. Um, but what does that mean in terms of who's currently in the department in terms of full posts and funded vacancies? By the way, have we written a concern regarding that one in the observation? Um, we will go to the observations now, Chair, and we will look at that. Okay. So the observations is on page 29, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, page 25, Chairperson. So noting the observations, having met with the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities and the Commission for Gender Equality, um, to scrutinize the annual performance plan and budget for 2020, the committee made the following observations. Chairperson, I just want to note, I need to include um, the National Youth Development Agency as well. Um, I'll correct that now. Thank you. Okay. So, in terms of general matters, uh, for the department, our observations are grouped into matters pertaining to the department, the CGE and the NYDA, and the recommendations um, follow the same structure as well. So, the committee commend the department for tabling its reports on time. In terms of 8.1.2, the mandate, the committees were concerned by the department's reference to its oversight role in the mandate and requested clarity in this regard. The committees also requested the department to clarify the difference between the current department compared to the previous Department of Women, 
Children and Persons Disabilities and the Department of Women in the Presidency. The committee was concerned that the department's monitoring and evaluation role was not clear in the APP and the strategic plan vis-a-vis -vis the emphasis placed on advocacy. To this end, the committee also inquired about the manner in which the department fulfilled its advocacy role. In terms of 8.1.3, in the request for the department to brief the committee on the STRAT plan and APP, we had also asked the department to give members um, an overview of what the response was in terms of the impact of COVID-19. With regards to informal traders, the committee inquired as to what assistance had been provided to informal traders and how many cooperatives have benefited from government's relief packages amidst the impact of COVID-19. In terms of rural areas, the committee was concerned that the community in rural areas such as the Northwest province do not have access to water during this COVID-19 period and that mine workers do not have personal protective equipment in rural areas. In terms of feeding schemes, the concern was that the community were not receiving food parcel in rural areas such as in um, the North West province. In terms of the Western Cape, the committee noted that the department is part of the National Command Center and requested the department to monitor that women, youth and persons with disabilities access interventions made by government, especially in the Western Cape province, which is now the epicenter of COVID-19. Particular concerns were raised about living conditions of foreign nationals at the Strandfontein camp, homeless people in Cape Town and persons living on farms in the Borland region. The department was asked how it had intervened in any of the aforementioned areas of concern raised. In terms of the NCC, the committees questioned the department on the role it plays in the NCC in ensuring that women, youth and persons with disabilities are not left behind in interventions that the government has put in place since the outbreak of the uh, pandemic and role clarity was required. In terms of the economic stimulus package, the committees indicated that youth are mostly affected by unemployment and that it was imperative for the department to assess whether they have been able to benefit from the social relief package that was announced by the government. Similarly, the economic stimulus package should be monitored and evaluated to determine the extent to which women and persons with disabilities are benefiting as well. In terms of a tracking system, the committees applauded the gender analysis that was developed, which is a tracking system during COVID-19, and indicated that this should not only focus on women, but the same should apply to youth and persons with disabilities. In terms of employee work hours, the committee wants to know the working arrangements of employees during the COVID-19 period. In terms of the state of readiness of provinces, the committee inquired as to the readiness of the provinces to deal with the COVID-19 related issues. In terms of education, the committee questioned what, if any, were the interventions made by the department to assist higher and basic education during this period. In terms of 8.1.4 human resource staff establishment, more clarity is required regarding the actual number of funded posts within the department, given this discrepancy is noted between what appears in the ENE 2020 versus the strategic plan what, and what was presented to the committee. So that covers Chairperson's um, question early on as to whether we've captured that observation. In terms of vacancies, the committees wanted to know how many strategic vacancies in the department and when will these vacancies be filled if these are vacant. The committee was concerned that the department had increased the use of consultants. Each program has an allocation earmark for consultants, business and advisory services. In terms of 8.1.5, drug and substance abuse and HIV AIDS, the committee queried what the role of the department was in dealing with drugs and substance abuse as well as HIV AIDS amongst youth in rural areas. With regards to law reform, the committee inquired as to what the draft legislation on women, youth and persons with disabilities referred to and why would such a still amount of time to develop legislation on disability rights bill. According to the APP, the department only intended to develop a legislative report in the current financial year and in the next financial year commenced drafting of a disability rights bill. In terms of coordination for women, youth and disability, 
the committees questioned how the department has ensured coordination and collaboration between women, disability and youth programs. The committee also wants to know how the department had advocated for inclusion of youth and persons disabilities issues in other departments. In terms of reprioritization, the committees queried how the department will be reprioritizing the allocation um, of human and financial resources under stakeholder and research program. The committee also questioned what has been prioritized in each program. In terms of youth development, the quick committee's question what the department was doing with regards to youth development in terms of its program. In terms of GBV, the committee noted the reports that the incidence of GBV had increased amidst the lockdown and impact of COVID-19 period hence requested the department to provide factual and detailed statistics to understand the prevalence. The committee also wants to know what interventions have been made by the department in this regard. The committee noted that 5 million has been allocated to establish the National Council on Gender-Based Violence um, and Femicide. <coughs> and inquired as to what the funds will be used for. The committee questioned what the role of the department will be in the council, what criteria has been used to establish the council and select members to serve on the council, and how is the council going to account. The committee acknowledged the development of the National Strategic Plan on GBVF, the Emergency Response Plan, and the National Council uh, on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide, but was concerned that the department has not reported on these issues um, to Parliament, specifically the committee. In terms of the NYDA, the committee also noted the term of office of board members on the NYDA board has ended and inquired about the steps taken by the department to deal with the matter. In terms of the Sanity Dignity Program, the committee wants to know how does the department monitor and evaluate the Sanity Dignity Program, the allocation as outlined in the abridged e, &E 2020, which amounts to 209 million within provinces and what the impact has been on the program since the lockdown. In terms of disability, the committee questioned what the tangible outcomes and the recommendations from the disability pro rights program was. In terms of our observations for the Commission for Gender Equality, the gender matters noted, the committee acknowledged the fiscal constraints within government and the CGE's efforts to manage its finances very prudently, Notwithstanding that, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the work of the CGE, as well as the adjusted appropriation, which is still forthcoming, the CGE is underfunded, which directly affects the magnitude of the services that can be rendered. The committee noted that outcomes, indicators and targets outlined in the strategic plan and APP were not all smart and needed to be refined. In terms of law and policy reform, the committee noted that the CGE is focused on law reform, but questioned which specific goal it would focus on in the current financial year, on whether there would also be focus on legislation before provincial legislatures. In particular, the committee indicated that the targets for quarter two to four were broad, as the submissions were not specified. The committee questioned what submissions were meant to achieve and how the, the impact will be measured. The committee questioned whether the attendance of meetings in order to influence policy and law reform was adequate as a target to be achieved, as the committee was of the view that this would not be sufficient to make an impact. Moreover, the committee noted that the role of commissioners need to be clearly articulated in this regard to indicate how the CGE would advocate, lobby and influence in order to bring about change. The committee acknowledged the outdated national gender policy framework and the need for an updated policy to guide the implementation of gender equality for the country, as noted by the CGE. However, the committee pointed out that this crucial aspect of work was neither reflected in the strategic plan or APP, and thus urged the CGE to report back to the committee on how it intended to address this gap. With respect to the role of commissioners, the committee questioned the role of commissioners into giving effect to the strategic plan and annual performance plan, as this was not clearly articulated in relation to strategic objectives one to three, that deals with the core business of the CGE. 
The committee noted that commissioners were only referred to 13 times in the strategic plan and then only in reference to strategic objective 4, which was concerning. Besides, the oversight role commissioners played in the various governance committees they chair. There was no indication within the STRAC plan and PAPP of the role commissioners played at a national and provincial level. In terms of the five thematic areas which the CG identified, the committee inquired as to how the commissioners were delegated to take a lead um, with each of these. The committee questioned what the role of commissions were in law and policy reform, insofar as the uh, submissions to Parliament is concerned. The committee also acknowledged the availability and support rendered by certain commissioners when called upon. In terms of gender mainstreaming, the committee noted the importance of fostering gender mainstreaming inquired as to how the CG was working with Parliament in this regard, particularly the National Assembly, the National Council of Provinces and the multi-party women's caucus that have all identified it as an important issue. The committee indicated that the indicator and target related to gender mainstream was very broad as it was unclear what the interventions entailed or specifically the CG would be focusing on in the public and private sector. In terms of gender responsive budgeting, the committee noted the importance of gender responsive budgeting and queried how the CGE would be monitoring and evaluating the implementation in government. In terms of case management, the committee welcomed the CGE's online system for case management and requested an update on the implementation in this regard with an overview of the tracking of cases. In terms of investigative hearings, the committee noted the importance of hearings undertaken by the CGE but questioned what systematic issues or correction, what systemic issues the CGE hoped to have resolved. To this end, the committee questioned how the CGE was monitoring and evaluating whether the recommendations were being implemented. In terms of GBV, the committee remained concerned about the levels of GBV cases reported during lockdown and questioned how the CGE was responding to these matters as incidents from members' constituencies revealed, victims continue to endure secondary victimization and lack of access to services. This was in relation to reluctance and or refusal by warrant officers to open up a case when a victim reports to a police station. The committee noted with concern the prevalence of Okutwala and queried how the CGE was dealing with this problem. The committee noted that the CGE's previous challenges with in with the Interim Steering Committee on GBBF in terms of accessing relevant documents and officials to be interviewed as part of the CGE's monitoring and evaluation work. To this end, the committee questioned whether CGE was subsequently granted all the documentation and access to officials to complete the work and produce a report. The committee queried whether CGE monitors and evaluates SAPS training as well as the support rendered to GBV victims in rural areas. The committee remained concerned about the reliability of the GBV statistics and requested the CGE to monitor this closely in addition to tracking the cases before the courts. In terms of shelters, whilst the committee acknowledged the work of the CGE on shelters, the concern noted was of victims of GBV with a history of substance abuse and addiction that are currently not being accommodated in government shelters. The CGE was asked what are the options for women with substance abuse that require shelter. In terms of outreach programs, the committee queried what outreach programs the CGE was implementing within institutions of higher learning and in schools via the Department of Basic Education. In terms of social empowerment, the committee questioned what specific role the CGE was playing in advocating for the empowerment of women in the economic sector with land reform as a president and identify these priorities within his State of the Nation address. In terms of men and boys, the committee noted that the CG had included a focus on men and boys but questioned how effective the program was and how this was being rolled out in all nine provinces. The committee also inquired as to whether the CGE had mentorship program focused on young boys and men in single-headed household. In terms of supportive material, the committee acknowledged the importance of supportive material as noted under Strategic Objective 2 on GBV, gender mainstreaming harmful traditional practices, 
but questioned whether the information would be disability friendly and whether these will be available in different languages. The committee also noted that information needs to reach rural areas and that billboards should be considered as a means of public education in vernacular languages, but that virtual platforms should also be explored given the move towards paperless system and embracing the fourth industrial revolution. In terms of strategic partnerships and collaboration, while the, whilst the committee agreed with the establishment of strategic partnerships and collaboration by the CGE as a means of giving effect to its mandate with limited finances, the committee indicated that the indicator and target was too broad and the CGE needed to specify with who it intended to form these partnerships with in the public and the private sector. In terms of HR, the committee requested an update on the critical vacancies in terms of the key positions and the process. In terms of the CEO position, the committee reiterated that the posts be filled timelessly as the incumbent's contract would come to an end on 31 July 2020. As such, the committee urged the CGE to expedite the process to avoid a gap in service delivery and that, ex um, that, um, and ex that external independent mechanisms are in place for the screening and vetting procedures. With regards to the NYDA and our observations, the general matters noted, the committee commended the NYDA for supporting its report, for submitting its report on time, as this also assisted members of the committee to engage with the reports beforehand. The committee notes the term of office of the members of the board of the NYDA has lapsed and that the recommendation has been that the CEO will be assigned the executive authority in the agency in the interim. As such, the committee inquired about the CEO's plan and how he would work with other senior managers in the agency in the absence of a board. The committee inquired about the NYDA views regarding the digital era as a means of assisting the economic growth of youth and how this could be achieved. Um, we had also asked the NYDA in terms of its COVID response with regards to child-headed households. The committee questioned what the NYDA plans were to assist child-headed households during COVID-19 and whether it was collaborating with other department, um, departments, specifically on plans for in, implementing um, the national health insurance to ensure that the health sector empowers youth. In terms of HR, the committee inquired about the NYDA plan to deal with the, with the filling of critical vacancies. In terms of vacancies, the committee inquired as to which of the 95 vacancies were critical and also what was the NYDA's proposed plan to deal with vacancies in light of the impact of the COVID-19 programs and budget. In terms of business support, the committee noted that applications received for 1,000 businesses in 100 days project, but that disbursement will only be done at level three of lockdown. To this end, the committee inquired about the implications in terms of quarterly target set, the committee also queried what criteria was used to assist informal businesses. In terms of the Youth Micro Enterprise Relief Fund, the committee noted that 226 businesses were approved by this fund out of 4,550, which amounted to approximately 5%, which was a low uptake. Hence, the committee inquired as to what the key challenges were in this regard and what were being done to address the challenges. In terms of stimulus packages, the committee inquired as to whether the NYDA had made contributions to shaping the stimulus packages provided by the government and questioned to what extent youth benefited from these packages. In terms of post-COVID, the committee also wants to know the plans of the agency and the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities to assist unemployed youth post the, post the COVID-19 period. In terms of disability, the committee requested more information on programs that target young women and youth with disabilities. The committee inquired as to whether the NYDA achieved a 2% target for employment of persons with disabilities. In terms of indicators, the committee inquired as to why there were no specific key performance indicators and targets related to financial management, supply chain, HR, governance, ICT, and facilities management. With regards to collaboration, the committee was concerned that there is no working relationship between the NYDA 
and the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. The committee inquired about the working relationship between Program 4 of the NYDA and the Department's Youth Development Program. The committee questioned what measures have been put in place to avoid duplication and optimum use of resources and funding between the NYDA and the Department's Youth Development Program. The committee questioned how the NYDA liaises with the Fashion Council given the restrictions they face. In terms of the National Youth Service and the um, EPWP program, the committee queried the difference between the National Youth Services program and the Pre Presidential Services program. The committee questioned what the role of the NYDA vis-à-vis -vis the Department of Public Works in terms of the youth brigades to assist with quarantine sites and whether the NYDA was monitoring and evaluating the program. The committee requested more information about what the NYDA envisaged the structure of the Presidential Youth Employment Intervention to be, who will be responsible for the outcomes, and what was the budget for the intervention. In terms of Program 2, the committee also inquired as to the difference between the two outcomes indicator, number of young people capacitated with skills to enter the job market versus the number of young people capacitated with skills to participate in the economy. The committee inquired what the role of the NYDA officials that have been allocated to this program were and whether the agency will utilize accredited service providers to capacitate the 15,000 and 20,000 young people with skills. In terms of June month, the committee inquired about the NYDA's plan to host June 16 activities. It also inquired as to whether there will be webinars, seminars, how to assist young people in order to participate in June 16 activities. Chairperson, um, just in terms of the conclusion, and I will follow through with the recommendations, the committee remains committed to ensuring that astute oversight is conducted on the Department, the Commission for Gender Equality and the National Youth Development Agency, who all have a significant role to play in improving the lives of women, youth, persons with disabilities and the LGBTQIA plus community. In terms of the recommendations, 10.1, the committees urge the department to ensure that, that issues for women, youth and persons with disabilities are mainstreamed into the work of various government departments um, as they participate in the NCC. The committees urge that the department should provide detailed written responses to the questions raised to them during the meeting that were not addressed. In terms of the mandate, now that the department's mandate is inclusive of women, youth and persons with disabilities, this must be translated into the policies produced and the programs implemented. More emphasis must be placed on increasing synergy between the department's programs to ensure a more coordinated approach and avoid operating in silos. In terms of GBVF, the department was requested to provide statistics on cases of GBV since the lockdown was implemented. The department to provide a progress report on the establishment of the National Council Against Gender-Based Violence um, and Femicide. I'll just correct that. And indicate what the five million will be utilized for. Bearing in mind, it's the five million for the current financial year. The department to clearly outline its role in the council what criteria will be adopted to establish the council and select members to serve on the council, and how is the council going to account on its funding and activities. The department to table the National Strategic Plan on GBVF, presented to the committee, and report back on the emergency response plan to the committee as well. In terms of the Sanity Dignity Program, the department should provide the committee with um, breakdown information on provinces which received sanitary products. The department must provide a progress report clearly outlining the rollout of the sanitary dignity program prior to lockdown and since the onset. Furthermore, the department should also indicate how issues or concerns that have been raised by the committee about the program have been attended to. The progress report must include um, a provincial breakdown of budget allocated and expenditure incurred, number of beneficiaries, criteria for selection of beneficiaries, um, 
directly benefited. The M&E mechanisms apply to assess the rollout. Outcomes of the value chain for the supply, production of sanitary products, and distribution. In terms of law and policy reform, the department must prioritize the overarching policies and laws that guide the implementation of mainstreaming gender, youth, and disability. As such, the National Gender Policy Framework must be updated and submitted to the committee by the next quarter. The gender responsive planning, budgeting, um, not mentoring, monitoring. Evaluation and auditing framework must be tabled for consideration. The national youth policy must be finalized and submitted to the committee. A draft disability bill must be tabled before the end of the current financial year. In terms of monitoring and evaluation, the department's monitoring and evaluation role must be clearly outlined as it relates to the APP and the strategic plan in writing to the committee at the next quarter report briefing. It should include what framework it intends to utilize and how this will be implemented in government. In terms of advocacy, the department's advocacy role must be clearly outlined as it relates to the APP and the strategic plan in writing to the committee at the next quarter report briefing. For the youth program in the department, the department should conduct an impact assessment on the youth program. With respect to the Commission for Gender Equality, the CGE must ensure that outcomes, indicators and targets are smart. Where these are broad, it must be refined and reported back to the committee. Commissioners to report back at a follow-up meeting with the committee and provide a more detailed report on areas of work are highlighted in the meeting, which included but not limited to the following programs, which was focused on men and boys, sexual reproductive health rights, law and policy reform. Um, they need to outline the, the, the submissions they will be pursuing, as well as um, the mention with re indicating that the national gender policy framework needs to be updated, the recognition of custom marriages campaign, the M&E tracking tool included the indices for various sectors, the GBV index at the provincial level, level Ukutwala, M&E of the National Strategic Plan, and the National Council on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide, mental health and healthcare professionals, a progress report on shelters, tax exemption for widows by SARS for pension payouts, um, as well as disability. The commissioners must have a clear plan of how they would contribute to fulfilling the CGE strategic plan and APP. This plan must clearly articulate their role at a national and provincial level. The committee uh, agreed that notwithstanding the current fiscal constraint, the CGE's finances should be enhanced in order for it to fully give effect to its mandate, particularly now with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. In terms of the NYDA, the NYDA should submit the recovery plan post-COVID-19 era, its contributions made regarding government's economic stimulus packages. The Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities, together with the NYDA, should look at the impact of and undertake an assessment of the stimulus packages to determine the extent to which young people benefit from the packages. The Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities and the NYDA should ensure that young people benefit from programs of government departments and entities such as DTI and the NEF. In terms of the specific recommendation to the Minister of Finance, the committee recommends that National Treasury consider increasing the allocation to the Commission for Gender Equality in order for the Commission to expand its reach. Um, thank you, Chairperson and Members. That concludes the draft report. Yeah, um, thank, thank you very much, Shifa. But uh, uh, with regards to CGE, I think if you remember, honorable members, the issue of them reaching out to people in rural areas, you remember that one? I think mm -hmm. it's not included. Remember, they were talking about... Uh, them going to uh, 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 radio stations, yes. chiefs, and so on. And then mm -hmm. uh, that day, uh, I even said, no, 
uh, it's, that's not enough. They need to have a clear program on how are, go- how are they going to reach out to people in the rural areas. I even made an example of um, using billboards for mm. message, you know, and, and, and I think it, that's one weakness that I still feel that uh, it's, it, they're not doing enough. Because even if you can go to about uh, Eastern Cape, uh, Northern Cape, uh, provinces that uh, 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 are mostly rural, mm. they are not being even known. But what is CGE? Yes. Because if they were known by, 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 by people, they were visible enough. This thing of Ukutwala and so on, people were going to raise issues with them and they, they were going to make a, a, a relevant or good interventions. But because they are not reaching out to, to people, they are focusing mostly, even when they go to KZN, maybe they are focusing on the townships. So meaning a, 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 a rural areas, the villages, people don't even know that there is a Chapter 9 institution that they can go to and be assisted when they, uh, uh, they need uh, 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 help. So the issue of reaching out, it must also be raised uh, uh, as a concern too, including the Department of Women. Both departments, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, I, I don't think they are visible enough to our people. They are reaching out enough to our people. Because what they they are doing mostly, they are doing. It's like for me, honourable members. It's like they are concentrating. If I may make uh, the right example, um, they still think they must say uh, 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 check. They don't check or monitor departments on what exactly are they doing. If you can take, for for instance, issues of youth, what is it? Because they think they are only focusing on NYDA, but NYDA is it's a, it's, it's another entity on its own that must deal with youth issues. What is it, specifically them as a department, what programs do they have for youth? I think maybe uh, 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 honorable members can also assist us on that one because I still don't get a sense on what exactly is the Department of Women in doing uh, 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 programs for youth that are focusing on youth. So there's still a, a, a gap there. It's like uh, 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 they are a Department of Youth, but what is it that they're doing for youth? What is it that you can proudly say as a, as a portfolio committee? We are going to do oversight on them, except to say we we made them to to draft a police a youth policy. You know, that's the only thing. So what 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 we what we should uh, 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 we must come up with an observation and a concern that will address that one. So I, I, I think you, you, you'll be bet, bet, you are better placed uh, to assist us on that one. But also with regards to the issue of uh, that program of sanitary perks, it's like the, a, a, a department of dealing with sanitary dignity perks. What exactly are they doing for women? Coming to disable, disabil, disable people living with disabilities, what exactly are they doing? If somebody can come from outside and ask you, uh, you are a portfolio committee on women, youth, and persons with disability, and people ask us, what are you doing? What oversight are you doing in relation to those issues of disabled people? What are we, how, what are we going to answer? What are we going to tell people? I'm just posing these questions to you as honorable members that, you know, I think I sit every day and think, what can I confidently t- tell people what is it that they are doing for disabled people? Maybe now let's, let me uh, 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 
hand over to you, honorable members, to engage on the report. I'm, I'm, I'm raising things that, you know, I think of ev every day. You know, it, it goes to uh, 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 their mandate, whether they, they, are, they understand their mandate or they don't understand their mandate. Uh, what is the manifesto saying? What is the... What did the president said in the State of the Nation address? You know, when you look at all those things, that's why we even ask them, what, they're sitting there in COVID-19 a, a, a command a, a team. What is it that they are doing? You know, I'm, I'm raising these things because maybe sometimes it's me who, who's hallucinating. Maybe Nina is born, I mean, I'm becoming a hallucinator. Yeah, well, so what worries me, I will say it in a meeting so that you can be able to help me also to understand good, what exactly are they doing. You know, if, if, if you can't even see them saying anything, when uh, 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 I, I thought when I think Yegel Asien, Asmuzeninin, Mam, I see Honorable Masiko. Honorable uh, Mam Sengwa, uh, Honorable Sheriff, Honorable Sheriff, you have to have it. Honorable MPT, and I, I want you to assist me, Mam Sonti, Masondo, Babu Nwabo, Malulege will be the last. Yeah. Okay, Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, it seems like the issues that you are raising, Chairperson, I have noted uh, uh, most of them here. But firstly, let me thank the, the, the team that we are having, Chairperson, as the Portfolio Committee. I think the work that they are doing is, is, is really great. And they have correctly captured... Uh, what are the feelings of the on, and the discussions of the portfolio committee as well as the resolutions? I'm happy with the reports, Chairperson, and I think that um, in terms of the, the way that um, they, they've written is the way that the portfolio committee has been discussing uh, throughout this time. Let me start with the issue of the N um, the youth development uh, uh, directorate. Chief Directorate, as as you had mentioned, Chairperson, I have I have it noted here. I think, as 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 a portfolio committee, as correctly uh, 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 said, Chairperson, we have expressed concern on the um, inability. Let me put it like that, of the 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 the, 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 the debt Directorate to execute its mandate. Um, we have called them a couple of times as a, as a portfolio committee before us, and we know that they've only, you know, really been existing through the NYPA. So I think we should add um, in the report the issue that we've expressed concern on the ability or inability there of, of, the, of the Youth Development Directorate to execute its mandate. In fact, to a certain extent, we're not even sure what their mandate is, yeah. and we're not sure whether they know or they've been able to correctly define their mandate as it relates to issues of youth development beyond the National Youth Development Agency. I then move um, to 8.1.2, which is the Sanitary Dignity Program. I think as much as we are talking about the issue of, of, of monitoring and evaluation, there's a great concern with the issue of the implementation of the framework itself. I think the department has not been able to work out correctly how this program should be implemented and how is it that um, they should, you know, uh, in fact, they've not even defined what the relationship between the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disability and Education is in relation to the implementation of this program. So, you know, we can talk about monitoring and evaluation, but for me, I think it's far, it's further down the line. The problem that we're experiencing with this program right now is the issue of implementation. So we should put something about the implementation of the program. And then after we can speak about the monitoring and, and evaluation aspect of it. Um, Kashifa, you will help us as researchers with the English and putting it correctly um, in terms of um, the sentences. The NYDA 
I, I remember that there was a, a, a member who raised an issue, and I think it should reflect on the issues of uh, E4IR, because currently we can't separate young people and the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. And they spoke about um, the training programs that, or the support programs that the NYDA is having in relation to assisting young people in the digital and uh, the data revolution. I think it reported to should reflect on issues of currently, because now we know we are moving towards, a, 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 in fact, we are fully now in a, a, a utilizing these digital platforms, and the NYTA should be in a, a should be having support programs for young people in relation to that. One last one, it's just a grammatical issue, Kashifa. I see that um, um, we, we, we refer sometimes to the committees uh, but I think it's just um, it's just a correction. For instance, an example is 8.1.2, where we say that the committees were. I think it's something that we just need to correct. Thanks, Trey. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Masiko. Uh, Honorable Mamsengwa. Yeah, I'm a cool mama. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I'll start with this department is a mother department because it should combine educate education department, DSD and health department. This is a mother of department. But come to education, our youth is also expected to get the same grant. The grant I'm talking about is 350. But there is a youth who is qualified. They can utilize in the schools assisted by this department to be utilized in the school because they are qualified. This pandemic, by taking unemployed qualified teachers and place them in school where they can assist teachers in teaching because they are qualified, rather than giving them 350 of which is, there is no use for them. Number two is going to NYDA. Mama, uh, yes. In fact, it, this department should be advocate, doing advocacy in terms of uh, the grant that government is, is, is giving out for yes. the un unemployed youth. Yes. Oh, okay, and then you are talking also about the youth that uh, has have um, qualifications. Yeah, th that they must be yes. placed. The department should also be assisting them yes. in treatment of those graduates yes. for internship. Yes. Oh, okay. The the other one is NYDA posts. Uh, I'm worried, Chairperson, about the IC of the for this post of the NYDA because the department come with it. The interviews were done. Who did the interviews rather than this committee? Okay. NYDA. Okay, we must separate uh, the post. The, the administrative post in the department okay. Okay. and the, the, the post of the board. In relation to the post of the boards, yes. the board, ne? we are still in a process to fill those posts. Okay. okay. Yeah, we are, so, we are still in a process. And from, from, from this month, I think second week, Kashifa is second week, ne? Kashifa, I mm -hmm. think it's, it's, second, it's second week or third week. 
because it's it's a subcommittee it's a joint a, 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 a subcommittee mama mama okay. with okay. nsop so what what nsop we are waiting for a program yeah but they were pushing some programs the certain SOP so that they can then avail themselves because Bona, I'm a portfolio, I'm a committee's wobble, they're not like ours. So that's why it program yet. But, but Bona, as it is, 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 as so what we have observed as a portfolio committee, Uti, there are there are posts that are not filled administratively. Yes. 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 Yeah, because a board is a governance structure no, which no. Tina yeah was busy with. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma. Thank you, sir. Okay, yeah, bonga ma. Honourable Sherry. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'd like to echo Honorable Masiko's appreciation um, to the researchers for putting such an extensive report together. Um, Chair, allow me to deal with the CGE first, um, because I don't have much to speak on it. Um, I think in the report we need to um, stress how important it is that the CGE is underfunded given the amount of work that we actually do. So I think as a committee, we've pledged our support to the CGE, and I think we just need to note it in our recommendations that we look at getting more funding for the CGE to be able to do more. You know, Chairperson, we, we demand so much from the CGE, um, but 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 we, we don't resource them well enough to be able to uh, have... Honourable Sheriff, I think it's the last recommendation on 10.4 for CGE. If you read 10.4... Got it. I see, Chair. And then, okay, let me move on to the department, Chair. Um, I think um, the overspending um, and the savings on vacant posts um, is something that I need a little bit of clarity for. I mean, the overspending of $1.7 million on a security contract is problematic. Um, in itself. Um, and then the savings on the vacancy post, um, and that will be reprioritized to the minister and the deputy minister's office. Um, I think we need to know what the value of that is, uh, what the value is in terms of monetary, but also in terms of how many vacancy positions will be moving to the ministry and the deputy minister's Honorable um, Sheriff, yes. You know, when coming to that one, the, the, um, Compensation of employees, you know, they have a, a, a high spending on compensation, a, a high allocation on, on compensation of employees, especially at senior management level. If I'm, my memory serves me right, uh, Kashifa was saying that in our report, 48 uh, posts of senior management level. Kashifa, did you say that they, they have 48? And, you know, I, asked, I was asking myself, that if they have 48 posts of people who are directors, chief directors, DDGs, but they can't uh, uh, unpack and, and, and draft programs for their, uh, for their department, but to me, it doesn't make sense. Why are we paying people who are incompetent? Do you get my point? Maybe somebody must assist me. Chair, I get your point, and in fact, you 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 took the words out of my out of my notebook, because the next point was um, the fact that uh, one point two million. So of these forty eight people, they each get one point two million rand um, per annum. That is excessive, um, and and remember, this is forty eight out of seventy two people. So it's almost double the amount of people are senior managers, and they're earning. 1.2 million per person per year. That's 100,000 per month, which makes us wonder, what are we doing as MPs? We need to be working for the Department of Women um, to be getting 1.2 million a year. Um, so so that was the next thing. Uh, yeah, the use I, of I think that's one. That's one. I think we must write a concern. We must make an observation and a concern that how come that we have senior managers 
who could hardly come up with a program on the youth directorate, and but also coming up with programs. What are they doing? What are they paid for? If the quality of the job that they are doing does not bear results, we don't get the results. Where is value for money that they are earning? Exactly. I don't sure. know whether I'm, I'm going overboard or what, but we are doing oversight. We are expecting that uh, if there are people who are paid one one point two million per month, even the results must be like that. Maybe Honorable Mpiti will assist us, me and you also. <laughs> Chair, me and you, we are in the same WhatsApp group because we share the same concerns. Um, Chair, let me just wrap up. Um, if you go to page 28, Kashifa, um, on the report, um, I just wanted to um, gain some clarity. I'll pull it up on my side quickly um, so that it doesn't take too much time. Um, Sorry, Chair. I, I wanted to just get clarity on the, the the statistics that we had spoken about in the last committee meeting when we spoke to the department in terms of GBV during COVID-19. Um, the fact that the department can't produce stats um, as quickly as we want it is concerning and is problematic for a couple of reasons. First of all, the department is at advocacy group, and they tell us this every single time they see us, we are advocacy, we don't implement. Um, and that is our job. So if they are an advocacy department, surely they need to have statistics to be able to do oversight um, across departments in government. They should be able to have statistics to inform their policy and their positions on advocacy. So the fact that we have to continuously ask the department to bring stats is concerning. It should be at their fingertips, especially if people are earning 1.2 million rand a year. This is their job. This is what they need to be doing. And, and for us as a department to note, thank you for receiving your reports on time. Chairperson, this is what they are paid to do, to put reports together and submit them on time. So basically, we're saying, well done for doing your job. Um, that, that's what we're saying. Um, I'd like to uh, make some uh, a, a, a amendments to the recommendations. In terms of the 5 million and the 15 million, Kashifa, I think you explained it in terms of 5 million for this quarter, but 15 million throughout the medium term. So I think we just need to make that clear that the total amount is 15 million going towards the council and not necessarily 5 million, as was previously stated. So we need to ask for progress reports, but also timelines, Chairperson. And this is where our oversight becomes important because we need to know what the government's time are so we can hold them accountable for not meeting those timelines. Um, the next thing I want to speak about is our own committee tracking system. We need to get a tracking system up to date in place so we can hold the department and the CGE and the NYDA accountable because chairperson they get away with a lot. They get away with it when we deal with other issues um, and we don't have something that we can continuously go back. Kashifa, I also want to add on observation and maybe recommendations that the department must add what their safety plan is for COVID-19 and what the interventions they are putting through to the command council, the COVID-19 command council, um, so that we can also track. And so when, when our constituency says, what is your department doing for women um, during COVID-19? I can say these are the interventions that the department has um, provided the council, um, and this is how we are holding them accountable. Without these, tools, without these mechanisms, Chair, we're not going to get anything, um, anything done. Um, and then one last thing is uh, an oversight model. Can we ask the department to put together an oversight model um, on how they're going to do oversight on departments in terms of gender response, budgeting, plan planning, and monitoring and evaluation. It's one thing to have a framework. It's another thing to have an implementing tool on how they're going to implement and monitor police, education, social development, home affairs, um, all these health, all these departments, but they have to have something um, yes. that we can yes. use to track them. Thank you, Claire. That's all I have. As my yeah, I, I, in, in fact, they, we should be say, adding that uh, they must also tell us how are they also doing monitoring or uh, doing the whatever whatever side they are talking about uh, in, in provinces in relation to cases of GBV and femicide. Is that clear, Akashifa? Because uh, we must know exactly that what is it that they are doing. 
Because remember, in provinces, there is no Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities. That it's, this department is only at, uh, at, at national level. So we must know exactly what, uh, what mechanism are they using to track or to monitor uh, uh, provinces on how are they de dealing with uh, uh, those issues, with monitoring and advocacy. Chair Thyssen, quickly, if you, if you will allow me, Chair, um, there are local governments um, that have a GOD committee, so gender, youth, and persons with disabilities on a local level. Um, so maybe it would be a good idea for the department to link with the local, um, the local committees um, and, and, and find a, a way to work together. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Sharif. Uh, Honorable Masondo? Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I would like to, to thank uh, our research team and even our committee for the good work done. Oh, so I have... no, now I, I, I say even <laughs> our committee, especially the Chairperson, for the work, okay. the, the good work done, Chair. I'm covered okay. by other members that you, who honorably whip, have covered me. So I'm okay. covered. I'm very happy about the work that has been done. Thank okay. you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Mam um, Sonti? Mam Sonti? Yeah, I'm going to tell you, Chairperson. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to Sheriff. Yes, so Sheriff. Unyatele apa kufunua unyatele akona chwe pata ni ngazi pali sangeliti e department si me concern dinga kuyo kakuulu kakuulu kwenye ba e yoku monitorisha ama police the police e abo mama ama police they don't take them seriously when they go and um and report their cases because each and every day the women are abusing, abused by the men in the communities, more especially in the rural areas. But now what I realize and what I heard at uh, Chaperson, today, not a long time ago, the police, if somebody go to the police, police station and report the case, the police said, no, she must go to the court and get the, what is that thing? the protection order. Instead of them to go and intervene on that case at the, the same time. So we are very, very, very concerned about the unsafe of women to the police when it comes to the GBV. If you look at Chapes in Apo, this is a good and double school man, you're alcohol. I'm so bank. Chair? Chair I can't hear you. Oh, this is a cool man. I can't hear you. Mam Sonti? Yes? We are so much. Yes, Chair Oh, it is Zonge Nabuyo after a report. Okay, otherwise I'm covered. Yeah. Bye, Sherry. Thanks very much. All right. Nyabonga, eh, Honorable Mpiti, Babu Ngobo. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I, I I hope you can hear me now because I've, yeah, I've, had, I, a, I've had a bit of issues with my connection. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon, uh, Honorable Members and colleagues. Thank you so much uh, for bearing with my, my issues. Um, I, Chair, there's a few things that I want to say um, in regards to, to the committee's report. Um, that we will consider later for adoption. Chair, I think the first thing that is very important to me to state um, is in line with the mandate of the department, and it speaks a little bit to what you were saying earlier. Now, we, we have a demand in this country where young people are struggling to find jobs, women are facing um, um, rape, sexual assault on a daily basis, uh, people with disabilities uh, are struggling um, to get access and to have equality amongst you know, the rest of people who are fully able. And so the demand that South Africans have of this department are not being met. 
And the reason why they are not being met is because a lot of the plans that the department is putting out are so inward focused. Um, they are focused on policy documents. They are focused on uh, policy uh, um, uh, work that they need to motivate in other departments. And so the demand is not meeting the plan. And when this happens, we then need to discuss as a committee with the department is how do we get the plan to meet the ideas and the hopes of South Africans and what they have of this department, right? And once we get that correct chair, uh, the mandate of this department, then we will be able to actually move forward. And I've mentioned on a number of, 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 of committees that we've had that I keep asking the department, how have they amalgamated their work with the NYDA uh, and with other competencies that they have to make sure that they meet the demands of people of this country on the ground. And that answer has not been, been forthcoming, Chair. So I think the mandate needs to say something, uh, particularly on the committee report. We need to raise this issue again of the, the, the amalgamation of the department in terms of youth and people and persons with disabilities. And we need to track how far that amalgamation is and how successful and impactful it is to meeting the demands of South Africans that they have on this department. Chair, uh, the second point I want to raise is on CGE. Now, I remember very clearly the committee in the last, in last year made a recommendation to the department. Um, and in fact, the department agreed with us to say that CGE as it is does not have the budgetary uh, support for it to be able to reach rural areas and be able to provide support and information to people who are do dealing with issues of uh, domestic violence, people who are dealing with issues of rape, people who are dealing with sexual violence issues. And so we made a decision as this committee that the department must take it within their grasp to write to Treasury and request uh, additional funding to support CGE to make sure that CGE appears in the Eastern Cape in Stexplate, appears in KwaZulu-Natal, in Kwamashu, appears in, in, in different places of the country, in areas in which um, there is no support for people who are dealing with gender-based violence. And so when I look at uh, the, 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 the report here to see that CGE has only has received an increase, but I wonder with this increase, is it not related to inflationary costs that there is an increase and not necessarily to the fact that the department requested Treasury to support the CGE in terms of uh, increasing their budget so that they can reach communities in rural, in rural areas. The, 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 the third point, Chair, is to say that... So, sorry for interjecting you. Um, what, 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 what comes to my mind is that uh, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, in the report or in their report, they do talk to issues of the department, now not CGE, of the department. Do they talk about uh, reaching out uh, of people in the rural areas or what, in their programs? You know, I can't remember everything, but I'm, I'm just thinking as you are raising it, and I also have a concern on it uh, with regards to CGE. But with the department, I, I think I did not check that. Honorable Masiko, can you also assist on that one? Also, you too. Okay, Honorable Thank you, Thank you very much, Chair. I just want to, perhaps, what is important now is to just give the context to say that when we raise the issue of the department not being uh, on the ground in communities in rural areas, their response was that they are not an implementer as a department, that they focus on policy issues and uh, uh, um, policy conceptualization. And in that conversation, we were told that CGE is the institution that has a foothold in communities across the country. And on that basis, um, the, the, it was this idea where we said that we must uh, fight for the increase of the budget of CGE so that CGE can find And CGE is the implementing arm, particularly when it comes to GBV in communities, because it does have branches um, 
and, and social workers that it can send to these communities. And if we agree that CGE is required in our communities, then we must also agree that CGE needs to be given the budget that it requires to be able to be effective and to play a meaningful role in our communities, at which, at this point, they've also told us, uh, commissioners in the CGE as well as CGE themselves have told us that the budget that they have is not enough for them to do the work that they are supposed to do. So the point Chair, that I'm making is to say that the department must take up that responsibility as mandated by the committee last year to say that CGE requires more funds and we need to support uh, CGE to be able to play the role that it needs to play in our communities, particularly keeping in mind the fact that during the coronavirus pandemic, there's been an increase of numbers of gender, uh, gender-based gender violence-related issues, and therefore that points out the need of why we require CGE to, to have more budget. So that's just the context on that point, Jim. Just can, to quickly can, run through my we, last... I'm pretty, can we... Um, sad, make a suggestion that uh, let's look at what the Department of Women has so that maybe what they can do because we know that we, uh, uh, there's, there are financial constraints you know, government has got financial constraints for now why can't we look at what the department has so that uh, 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 whatever program they have they can then make a joint program with CGE in reaching out to the rural areas. What do you think? I'm asking all of you, honorable members, not honorable and pity only, because it's, it's, it's a concern for all of us. Chairperson, I agree with you. There are some programs that they are not going to use the budget for. So they can use that bu budget to assist CGE so that yeah. CGE can be visible in even in rural areas. Okay. So we need to formulate then a a, 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 a a consent and a, a, a recommendation because remember also CGE is a chapter 9 institution so uh, they they need their independence but I think the department can 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 there's nothing wrong of the department drafting a, having a, a, a reaching out program together in jointly with CGE that that is my my thinking I are you fine honorable members I yes, fine. I'm fine. Very yes, much support. fine. Okay, sharp. Yes, we support you. Okay, honourable people, to serve for that. You can continue. Thank you very much, Chair. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Chair, my third point is to speak on the use of consultants. Now, Chair. I've noted on the, the report um, that is up for adoption today that the, the, the consultant usage by the department is now sitting at 50.5 million rand. That is an increase of 8.7 million from the last budget in the last financial year. And so I think this is a, a huge concern for me, Chair, because I, I, I really would like to know from the department whether or not this increase of 8.7 million is related in any way to inflation, one. Two, if it is, Chair, I'm still very much concerned that at the same time we have had an increase of over 8 million rand in terms of supporting the salaries of senior managers and directors within the department, but also at the same time we are having an increase of the usage of consultants, also by an increase of about uh, around about 8 million rand. So exactly... What are we trying to say to South Africans? Are we saying that uh, we must increase the salaries of directors, of managers within the department, but yet those very same directors and managers are unable to do the work that is being required on the ground, particularly noting the fact that the department has been very clear to say that they are not an implementer of of. of of, of, of uh, programs, but what they do is to assist and to advocate for policies that speak in support of young people, that speak in support of women and persons with disabilities. And so how do we reconcile as a committee the, the issue of an increase in the budgeting for consultants and the increase of budgeting for senior staff uh, within the department that amount to 48 people 
that will receive an increase in this financial year. I think we need a very strong uh, um, uh, worded uh, expression there in this document so that we can have a full understanding of what that means. Um, Chair, the, 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 the second last thing is just to say that um, um, my colleague, uh, uh, Honorable Novo, has already covered me, but I wanted to say that equality is not a ramp. And this is a, a phrase that many people who are living with disabilities in the country always mention. To say to us, we cannot say that because there's a ramp outside of a building, we are seen, we are recognized. Yeah. And so when I look at the budget of, of persons of disabilities, I'm very concerned, Chair, because we have raised on a number of, of occasions, and I think my, my colleague, Honorable Ngobo, has been very passionate about the issue of persons with disabilities. And now to reflect on the budget of 22 million rand that has been allocated for, for persons with disabilities with no concrete ideas and concrete programs in how we are going to increase access, in how we are going to increase equality, in how we are going to make sure that people living with disabilities do not feel as though this department has not brought them into the conversation. So I'm unhappy about the, the budget on that issue. And I think we really need to have a serious uh, a conversation as a committee about the manner in which the department has decided to find expression on the issues of people with disabilities. The last issue, Chair, is just to say that um, we, we must be able, as, as a committee, to speak very strongly um, on the fact that the department needs to understand what it's there to do. And if there is a, a concern and, and cries of communities in this country of people saying that this department is not meeting our expectations, this department is not saving us from our abuses, this department is not helping us find jobs as young people, then unfortunately the mandate must change, uh, Chair, to reflect these issues and concerns. And therefore I remain concerned about the mandate of the department. And I think this is something that the committee really needs to apply its mind as to how we will continue to engage uh, the department, noting the fact that people's concerns and issues are not finding expression in the mandate in which the department has adopted. Thank you very much, Chair. You know what I want to suggest? In fact, your Honorable MPT, you reminded me of um, on the issue of dis uh, the people living with disabilities. You remember the budget was allocated to the Department of Social Development. They were supposed to measure the activities of uh, disabled pe people that was done by social development to their department because they are the ones now who are responsible for persons with disabilities. Kashifa, you must help us there. Because last time we said the, the monetary part, they must leave it with the Department of Social Development. But the, the real work, uh, uh, they must also get reports from Social Development and report to the Portfolio Committee. But I think it was just an, an oversight from our side that uh, we never made a, a follow up. So I think we must find a way on how are we going to deal with issues that we, uh, we raise concerns of and, and, and check them and make follow up with the department. But I, um, what I want to suggest to you, honorable members, that we are going to call the department. Remember, we said we are going to call a, a CGE next week. And then uh, also we need to, uh, uh, to have another meeting with the department so that we must dwell with the, uh, 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 much in the issue of their mandate and their programs. Because if we don't attend to it now, that means we are going to have a problem. You see, most of the issues that we're raising... Uh, if you can check our previous report, you can see that some of um, uh, some of them uh, were raised in the last uh, 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 financial year. So I think what we need to do, um, the, the, the the staff members, our staff members, you need to identify all the issues that we are going to discuss with the department that day. for us to be able to do our oversight uh, 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 
according to uh, the expectations. Because if we were, were not going to do that, that means we'll miss a lot of things. Do you hear me, Kashifa? Can yes, you hear me? Yes. Oh. We're taking uh, between myself, Tassim, and Crystal. We yes. know too what the key issues are um, as members raise them. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Yeah. And if, even the issue of consultants, uh, I don't remember what was their response, or, or, or is one of the questions that they did not respond to. Because it's not for the first time that we raise the issue of consultants. You remember even last we raised it, Ruti, you have uh, people who are in certain posts who are, who are expected to be do doing a job. Hence, I, at the end of the day, we even recommended that uh, they, they can't be getting bonus. Because if they are getting bonus, they are getting bonuses for doing what? If it's consultants who are doing their job. So I'm trying to think of all, all these things that, uh, in fact, the issue of consultants uh, 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 was raised. And we made a recommendation that uh, they must stop using consultants. The consultants that they should be, uh, 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 they should tell us what consultants are they going to use for what. And I don't see anything about ICT also. I'm trying to read uh, 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 in our recommendations, um, unless maybe, you know, I'm aging. Uh, 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 I don't see any uh, concern about I I ICT. Unless maybe honourable members they see it, you can ha also help me. The next person is honourable Ngobo. Uh, thank you so yeah. much, Chair. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Yeah, Masiko. Before, we go, sorry, sorry, honourable Ngobo. I just want to bring to the attention Ganjanja that she sent us the same statement that she she sent this morning on the racist attack. No, man, she must send you the one of alcohol. That, that this one is issued, it's out. We want the racist one. Yeah, of alcohol, of alcohol. Janja, the one of alcohol. Okay, uh, we can continue. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. I also want to thank our staff and you, Chairperson, for the report that has been compiled. This draft report. And Honorable MPT has covered me on the use of a consultant. I also believe that if the department spends so much on the compensation of employees, then the employees should be able to provide the services that are being outsourced to consultants. So I think that uh, the use of consultants should be condemned in the strongest terms possible. The second comment that I would like to make is under observations. In 8.1.3, under the Western Cape, the subheading Western Cape, where it says that the committee noted that the department is part of the National Command Center and requested the department to monitor that women, youth, and persons with disabilities access interventions made by the government, especially in the Western Cape. So I think that we should also amend, we should amend this paragraph to add other provinces like KZN, Gauteng, Eastern Cape, where we also see an increase in COVID-19 infections. Uh, the last comment that I would like to make... What, again, what, what point is that? It's uh, 8.1.3 under observations, under the subheading Western Cape. Informal traders. Eight no, under the, three. Yes, under the subheading Western Cape, the one that Kashifa is editing now. Chair, my hand is up for that point. Masiko, Honorable Masiko, okay. Chair, okay. I think it's written well because it's saying that women with and persons with disability must access interventions made by government, especially in the Western Cape. And I think that especially it's because of the 
you know, yes, there's an increase in cases, and yes, there's an increase in half staying, but the numbers in Western Cape are huge. So I think if we're saying especially in Western Cape, it speaks to the fact of the numbers being, you know, triple or even four times the number of the other provinces. I think it's, it, it covers everything, Che. Yeah. Che. Yeah. Yes, yeah, but I also think that there's no harm in adding other provinces as well where there's an increase. Uh, uh, Chair, the sentence is saying, sorry, Chair, the sentence is saying that especially in Western Cape, which is now the epicenter of COVID-19, if we add other provinces, it will then defeat the purpose of the actual sentence itself. Yeah, you're right. We have a problem. Oh, not a chip. Yeah, more than that, at first, more than that, it's a good thing. Uh, nicely, um, if I may just interject here. Okay. Chair, I understand the point that Honorable Masiko and yourself is making. But the fact of the matter is that currently, yes, it may be the epicenter. But as we do more testing, the epicenter will shift. Um, and that's a trend that is made in the projections by the command council. So it's not something that we're just saying, Nje. The point is, is that as testing continues and as testing becomes more available and more testing is done, we will see the shift in the epicenter of coronavirus. Yeah, but but I think the point that Honorable Nubo is making is that we must use a general um understanding of the coronavirus and the department must ensure women youth and people with disabilities issues are taken not only in one but the whole country um and, and their job is to look at the whole country and not just certain um provinces thank you uh, 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 we, we can, can i can i return i remember this 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 point uh, very well it was raised by honorable member Kilion. And she was passionate about the point that she raised because she even went further to speak about the foreign nationals instead in the, I think, Stanfontaine camp that she spoke about. So I don't want us, Chair, since Honorable Gillian, she's not here, to defend the point that she had raised. And kept and it's captured quite well in here because I remember she, she, she raised it a number of times as herself um, her constituents is falling in the Western Cape, and she raised it as 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 as, as passionate as she did. Thanks, Che. No, what what you? Piti, yeah. Honourable Piti. Thank you, Chair, uh, for the opportunity. Um, Chair, I also want to give some some input on this issue because I think it's a very important one. Um, when we had this committee, uh, the joint committee, which happened about two weeks back. Um, I, I, I don't think there was any disagreement that Honorable Gillian had or that we had with Honorable Gillian's point. But I think two weeks later, we've received much more information from that meeting that we had back then. And the information that we have is quite clear. Uh, the government has been clear to say that the next epicenter that's going to come is the Eastern Cape. We've seen the, the large increase of numbers in the Eastern Cape and the fact that Many people within the Eastern Cape still don't have uh, the requisite uh, testing uh, uh, materials that is required for them to be able to be tested. And so when we look at these issues and primarily look at the issues where provinces that are not prepared uh, with quarantine sites, with uh, having beds to ensure that uh, uh, patients who, who are carriers of the virus are able to, to receive treatment, um, and so when we when we when we just focus on one province, I really do feel, Chair, that it is it negates the fact of the estimation that we've received from uh, the NCC in terms of uh, the next epicenter being the Eastern Cape, and also looking at the Free State because Free State was also mentioned as one of the the, the next outbreaks that that would be hitting us. And so one thing we need to remember. Honorable Mpiti, Honorable Mpiti, you know what is wrong with all of you. It's, it's because all of you, you want to politicize this matter. What we are raising in the report, we raise issues that we discuss on the day of the meeting. So anything that is outside this, this the, the, that day that was not raised, you can't put it here in this report. So everything that we raise, we raise issues that we have asked the department. 
based on what they presented that day. Anything else outside that thing, you can't put things that they did not raise on that. We did not talk to them at that time. Remember, when we write reports, we write reports according to what they've presented before us. And then we raise concerns according to what is presented before us. So the issue that you are talking about now, all of you, it's, it's, it's out. So you can go there. What we can do, Tina, uh, we must um, write our own statement with, as, a, as a portfolio committee to say we are now uh, 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 having a concern as a portfolio committee that we are seeing the developments in, in other provinces that uh, we thought... Uh, 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 yeah, well, it's something that you can raise up uh, as a portfolio committee. There's nothing stopping us in writing a statement regarding that. You know, but what's that? Oh, my leg. Oh, Iman, I got to Kuluma. So you are disrupting me. Okay, so. I'm trying to guide all of you. Oguti, when we do a report, we do a report based on what was presented that day and was raised with them on that day. Anything that was not raised with them that day, eh, 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 we can't, you know, especially if it's not in their report. But Tina, there is nothing stopping us in discussing other things as a portfolio committee that are, were presented in the meeting that day. You see, like issues of mandate, honorable pity, I raised them, you raised them, Masiko, Honorable Masiko raised them, because on that day also we raised those issues. The only thing, because now we are writing our own report, we, we go uh, 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 into detail about what we want uh, to reflect in our report. That's why, you see, there are things that you can talk about, but there are things that you, you cannot... Uh, uh, uh. Now it's like we are being unfair to the department. Because remember that we raise issues that are related uh, 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 to what they were doing at that time. So after three weeks, then you come with something else and you want to put it in the report, it's wrong. I just wanted to clarify that one. But there is nothing wrong of us as a portfolio committee in uh, uh, writing a statement and raising a, a, a concern on the development on, uh, with regards to COVID-19 that we are seeing as a, 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 a danger to our, 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 our communities. So we can craft that. Sure. And yeah. there's nothing wrong, there is nothing wrong in, 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 in any party to say, uh, we don't support this recommendation. Recommendation number one it must be noted in the report. That's how reports are done. That's how uh, 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 it works. I hope I've tried to clarify all of you. Can, uh, honor, uh, honorable Noble, we, we are done, by the way. Ne? No, not not. Okay. Okay. Okay, I, I just want what to time ask. Finish? What time I are we finishing? What time are we finishing? Um, six o'clock. Che, can I um, just on this note, I've put on the screen a 10.1.8 response to COVID-19. The department must monitor the situation in other emerging hotspots insofar as the impact on human, women, youth and persons with disabilities are concerned. Uh, uh, can, can that capture, because um, we had noted all the concerns and observations around COVID and um, we actually didn't have a recommendation around COVID. So this uh, recommendation uh, is broad. In terms of the department, ten point one. You were reading way. Um, ten point one point eight. It's up on the screen, chair. Response to COVID nineteen. The department must monitor the situation in 
other emerging hotspots in so far as the impact on women, youth and persons with disabilities are concerned. Because we didn't have any one specific recommendation in terms of all our observations with regards to COVID-19. So this um, recommendation is a, gen it's a general one in which we're requesting the department to be um, mindful and monitor the impact in terms of um, their mandate, which is, pertains to women, youth and persons with disabilities. Honorable Maluleka. I don't disagree with what uh, Kashifa is writing now, but my concern is, are we still having that one of the hotspots? Because I was seeing she was erasing some of the things there. But I want us to maintain the, that uh, recommendation that we had. That was talking about the hotspot. And it was Western Cape, KZN, Gauteng. So if we, we maintain it, we must just maintain it as it is because it says especially Western Cape and we are not predicting what is going to happen. What the other honorable members, they are saying that Eastern Cape is going to have, it's going to be an episode. It's just a prediction, but we are talking about what is happening now. And we are right, Chairperson, when you say, our recommendation should be based on what we have discussed with the department on that day, not what we are thinking will happen next next time. We are not talking about the future. We are talking about what we have discussed. So I, I want us to, to maintain that recommendation that was talking about the hotspots. Yeah, in fact, uh, I get it. that's why I'm trying to give you your guidance, that, you know, there are other things that are not meant for the report, are meant for the debate. Exactly. That's why I'm saying if we, as the portfolio committee, we have a concern on those things, we can write a statement, a formal statement, about those concerns and about the role and the, men, and, and, and the responsibilities of the department it's still in our it's it's, it's 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 us who's writing and we can also write to them for money and we expect them to give us a response we can't understand us we must separate these things this Issues that were raised in a meeting, they must be captured like that. Oh. Yeah, but that's perfect. Uh, uh, on this uh, point, uh, that. When, when uh, we don't follow Dick about this thing because mm. man, but because man, yeah, that's not the point I want to make, Chair. Okay, Chair, the point that I want to make is I've there's no question about removing anything, particularly on this point. That's not what is being said in this conversation. And I just want to make that clear. Um, the comments of Honorable Gillian are to stay on the document because those were her mm -hmm. comments. Yeah. And so there's, there's, no, there's no saying that it must be changed. What I'm saying, oh, though, oh, okay. is that can we add on to what she has said of the other areas that also require assistance not based on uh, speculation but based on forecasting so that the department knows that in the next couple of months they need to be focusing on the free state they need to be focusing on the eastern cape they need to be focusing on kzn as the potential peak areas and hotspot areas that are to come so the issue of, of honorable gillian must stay there of course but we need to add to it that's all i'm saying chair thank you very much yeah can, can, can Kashifa, uh, uh, because I, I can't see my screen, but I think she then, if we have that addition that Kashifa had, had said, can she just read it to us uh, one last time so that we agree on it? But, but I think it covers everything that we're talking about. I didn't hear oh, she must, I, can I she can't read? see it. Kashifa, can you read the road now? Person, she has removed what was written before. No, she, she just wrote Western Cape. So, the first 
uh, said what was written before it was the hotspot it was western cape kz and how we must have the that uh, bullet as it was before and maybe at what Honorable Mpiti say at the end, the last sentence, I'm, I don't have a problem with that one. But we must not remove what has been written there. We are, can you hear, Kashiva, what uh, 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 they are saying? Uh, yes, Chi. So, that bullet this... must remain that, like this. Yes. And then a uh, 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 note ne? what they are adding now. I get it, that's what you're saying. Hey, hey, I'm requesting uh. that she reads that sentence then that she, add, she added, and then we actually... And I can't even see it. Can she just repeat it? Can you repeat it, Kashifa? Um, yes, I will. So, just to clarify, what we had in the initial observation was only the Western Cape. And the, um, the indication was, the committee noted, that the department is part of the National Command Center and requested the department to monitor that women, youth and persons with disabilities access interventions made by government, especially in the Western Cape province, which is now the epicenter of COVID-19. Particular concerns were raised about living conditions of foreign nationals at the Sunfontein camp, homeless people in Cape Town and persons living on farms in the Poland region. The department was asked how it had intervened in any of the aforementioned areas of concern raised. Yes. What members are asking now is that initially, based on the discussions, I had included hotspots and in the three other mm. provinces. Can I get yes. guidance, Chairperson? Would you like me to do that now? Mm -hmm. Yes, Kashifa, because they are the hot spots. It's KZN, Western Cape, Haute. And I don't know whether Eastern Cape was there. Yes, Eastern Cape. Yes. I mean, understand me. Yeah. Let's take that. There was a sentence that Kashifa had added, and I agree with it, because now it doesn't single out any of the other potential, if you want to call them potential hotspots. But she just said that, I think it was correct, if she can repeat that sentence that she wanted to add, because it's just a generic one, and it says that any other, you know. Yes. Mm. Um, thank mm. you, Ms. Masiko. So this is our observation. And uh, yeah, on, I'm I'm to COVID, the, the recommendation is at the end. Can you read it out, Kashifa? We can't see it. Yes, I'm going to go there, Ms. Masiko. So what I've included was one more recommendation under the Department 10.1.8, response to COVID-19. The department must monitor the situation in other emerging hotspots insofar as the impact on women, youth, and persons with disabilities are concerned. Oh, that's what I said. Yes, yes. Just add a word, maybe interventions. Um, so not only monitor the impact, but also the intervention. interventions. Yeah. Report on monitoring and, inter and interventions by the department. Good. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. The, what we're done with that one. Uh, let's go to Mamalu uh, Dega. Sorry, Chair. Babu Mwabo. Yes, Chair. Um, it was that point and the last one which was which relates to persons with disability and that would be partially covered by Honorable Mpiti and especially as regard to the project relating to Program 4, which speaks to the rights of persons with disabilities. It's not an enough project. And I would also like to make a, a comment under recommendations uh, in 
uh, where it says that a draft disability bill must be tabled before the end of the current financial year. I think that this is a very good recommendation, especially as it speaks to persons with disabilities. And even during the disability webinar, which was recently held by the department, uh, the representatives of persons with disabilities made the clarion call for this draft disability bill. So I think that is the committee must monitor the department is role in this regard and ensure that this draft disability bill is submitted to us before the, the end of this current financial year. Thank you. Yeah. 10.4. 10.1.4 under recommendations. The last sentence, Chair. Okay. Yeah, but uh, ten point four. I think we need to remember. Um, they have not tell tell us uh, whether they finalised the measure of uh, measuring of uh, issues of disabled people taking them from its social development to their department. You, you remember that one, Moss? Yes. Yeah, um, so we're not saying anything here, unless um, maybe I don't read it right. Yeah. Yes, I was just saying that it's, uh, the proposal, the, the recommendation is good, because it says that the, the department said that they are going to present the disability draft bill uh, in the next financial year. So the recommendation is saying they must pre present the they must they must submit a draft disability bill before the end of this current financial year. Oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah, thank you for the right. Okay. And then um, agreed. Honorable uh, Thank you, Chairperson. I think most of the concerns that I have, they were raised by honorable members, but maybe I just want to find out if this uh, APP and the strategic uh, plan that they've submitted, have we already adopted it or are we still going to adopt them because if we are still going to adopt them then I recommend that maybe we need to say to the department especially on consultants that they must reduce that amount because really it's too much and that amount should go to the CGE I, I, I'm not sure whether I, I'm clear on that one I, I just want to find out have we adopted this uh, budget or are we still going to adopt it? And are we allowed as a committee to make a recommendation to say that amount of the consultants, because it's too much, they should reduce it? Yeah, we can make a recommendation as a committee to them to say, uh, because one, that allocation for consultants uh, yeah. We did not get a clear a, 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 a response on wh why should they a, 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 a budget so much for consultants when they do have adequate staff who are doing the actual job. Okay. So we can that uh, as the portfolio committee, we feel strong that maybe they should all, uh, on 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 what they've allocated for consultancy for consultants, they should. Uh, mm. uh, uh, take maybe 10 million or 20 million and uh, transfer to CGE. But I don't know how do they do that, whether they should consult with National Treasury or what, but that can be also be checked with National Treasury regulations. Which is, how do they do that? Yeah, that's yeah. why I was but asking whether they've CGE, CGE already, already have presented their budget. You know? mm. And mm. Uh, mm. we can make a recommendation and see how are they going to respond. 
to that recommendation. But we, the legacy okay. is open ended. We must say, we feel strong as the portfolio committee, which maybe on the amount that they have uh, allocated for consultancy, they should take out a 10 million and give it to a CGP. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And then, how they respond, they will tell us when they come to uh, the portfolio committee, which, uh, is it uh, viable, is, is it doable, or is not doable? Oh, okay, thank you, Chairperson. I agree with you. Then maybe on that one, also we should just add that the department must capacitate its staff or officials in order to reduce or do away with consultants. Because really, it, it is high time that they do away with consultants. We don't need consultants in that department because they are not the implementing agents. So why should they have consultants? Whereas there are officials who are earning a lot of money, 1.2 million per annum, but they are doing nothing. They rely on consultants. Then I, I, I don't think it's, it, it occurs well. And maybe the last thing, Chairperson, I, I would suggest that uh, before recommendation, I mean, yeah, we must have recommendation, then conclusion at the end. We cannot have a conclusion then recommendation at the end. I, I just want uh, Kashiva just to rectify that. Recommendation should be 9.9 uh, .9, and then conclusion should be 0.10. I'm not sure whether I'm clear on that one, Chairperson. No, Kashiva can, 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 Kashiva. Yes, Chair. Do you hear what um, um, Maluleka is saying? Yeah, I've noted with what Anul Maluleka was saying. Uh, this is the f um, format that's been given to us by oh. Parliament. So it's a standard format across all the committees in how the report should be laid out, um, Chairperson. This is, this is a set template for which we um, all committees have to outline the budget vote report. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. No. Even, even myself, it, uh, that's how I read it ne, at first. That because I remember Tuti, they have Parliament have got a set, uh, their own f standard format that they give to committees on how they must draft AMA reports. So then I just left it. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure because I, I serve in another committee. Oh. Our report was saying recommendation, then conclusion. I, I'm not sure whether they missed it, but if it's a format that is approved by the, by Parliament, then I don't have a problem. And but even this is Joyce. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. myself, for me, it doesn't make sense. Go to on a conclusion page, you will say, but no recommendation. No recommendation. But what is wrong, Kashifa, if we change it and put it down? Um, if she for the and for for it to be logic. Um, yeah, I will I will liaise the chair and and um and indicate uh what uh management has said. She just um around the issue of consultants, Crystal has just notified me in terms of the risks identified in program two and three. That's for the department. I'm just going to read out based on the brief she prepared for members, in both programs, which are output driven and where much of the impact based work occurs, the department indicates that it is under resourced in terms of financial and human resource and expertise. That's for program two and three. To this end, it will require external support, that is consultant services, to achieve some of its targets, as well as the urgent filling of vacancies. The department notes that consultant services where used will be once off and will include skills transfer. Uh, so it's 50 million is too much. There's uh, a, a, why it's 50 million is too much. Why can't they use CETA? Yeah, it's a glitch, Chairperson. Yeah. Yeah, because 50, 50, million 50, 50 million is too much. They, why can't they use CETA? 
Um, Chair, just a quick clarity um, from Kashifai, if I may. Um, does that m mean training? So are they putting training of staff members under consultants for s transfer of skills? We, have you ever seen it since you started no. the transfer never, of skills? Never, Chair. That's why I'm confused. Yeah. Maybe. That's why I'm, I'm saying no. Let's make our recommendation. And I recommend that uh, they will must use CETA if they want to do so, uh, uh, any kind of training. And Chairperson, do we have a report of their um, staff complement? If they say their their staff complement is not enough, can they give us a report of their organogram and their staff complement is? Ah, Malule, I wish to have found a report there. Oh. Mm. Mm. Uh, they don't have stuff and where they don't have stuff. Remember, remember, we are going to we say the move. I'm sorry, Chairperson. If it's like that, then I'm, I'm satisfied. <laughs> no, thank you, Chairperson. That was what I, I, was, up, I was going to contribute. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Maululeke. Um, uh, I think uh, those are the recommendations. Uh, Kashifa, you can work on the one, the last one that we're talking about now with Honorable Maluleke in relation to use of con the allocations that, allocation that is made for consultants vis-a-vis -vis, uh, whether it's, if it's for skills development, they can use CETA. Because if they do have people that are, are, are in, in certain posts, those people must do their work. So as the portfolio committee, we are discouraging the use of consultants. So I think that's the last one that we're adding. On that note, uh, I'm sure we have uh, done justice to our report. And uh, if there's anything else that members still feel that we need to add, uh, they can say it before we... we Chair Mpiti. Yes, okay, Honorable Mpiti. Thank you so much, Chair. Chair, my, there's just two inputs that I actually forgot to, to raise when I was speaking. Um, the first one relates to the, the issue of the national youth policy. And I know that Kashifa, when she presented, did mention that it will be drafted and then sent to, to the committee. But I really just needed to raise this concern after, I think, Chair, you are very much aware of this concern because I spoke to you about it. But organizations like uh, My Vote Counts, organizations like um, uh, uh, Amandla, uh, uh, and a number of them, uh, Youth Lab, have indicated to me and, and I raised this chair a few, a, few, a few months ago. I think it was in February, if I'm not wrong. Um, and I also raised it in the committee as well. But to say that, chair, the, the manner in which that process is going to be handled, I don't know if we can add it here, but I think it needs to be quite clear because the department had said that they would be having consultations uh, provincially. And they said that those consultations, they would send out invitations to young people to give uh, public comment on the, the National Youth Policy 20, 2030 document. And so, Jay, the, the, the one thing that happened in the initial phase of that public comment process was that there were events that were held in Gauteng and KZN where public con consultation or public comment was done uh, on that policy. But other provinces were left aside. And so I think, Chair, it's very important for us. They were left aside during COVID, no? Yes, yes. Oh, so yes. Think, what, we, yeah. what we need to say, in fact, you are reminding me. Because remember, we asked for an extension. And then they extended that it should. It, it's going to be the 30th of April. And uh, I, I raised it for months. 
and then they extended up until 30th of April. But now, in between, then there was a, a COVID-19. So those consultations were not made. So what we should be saying, uh, 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 what we need to do to the department is to write to the department that uh, due to COVID-19, uh, as, 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 as indicated in the, uh, 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 regarding issues of consultation, consultation was not done. Uh, let's, let's get from the department, which, what, what is it that they are going to do now? Because uh, youth formations, youth organizations, civil society organizations in other provinces, they didn't get an opportunity to engage with them. It's only the it's, it's counting in what and case then. Repeat. That's true. It's it's so that counting we, and it's yeah, counting that's and case the problem. Is. We can write to the the, the, the department. In fact, uh, 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 we are noting it that we need to write a formal uh, a letter to the department that uh, they must tell us on how are they going to deal with it. Because now other provinces didn't go for AMA consultation because of COVID-19. Well, uh, thank you for raising it, ne? Che, that was my first point. But just to say, Che, on that point is that it's important for us to get it right and for us to finish it quickly. And so I think that's why it's so important uh, to, to take the step that you are mentioning for us to write to the department, because I'd rather that we get the process correct and we get people's comments than to rush the process because we, we, we're trying to meet targets. So that's just the one thing. The last thing, Chair, is just to say the issue on the commissioners of CGE. Um, I, 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 I think it's important that we need to say something in this document because the, the the work that CGE will be doing uh, and also to motivate for that money that is left behind to go to CGE, we need to bring in the commissioners to say that um, um, the commissioners at this point in time, their, their roles and responsibilities are only about oversight of committees of thematic areas. And so if we are saying that more budget or more money is required, then perhaps the commissioners uh, uh, play a very important role um, in, that, in that sense to motivate for that money, as an example. Um, secondly, to say that uh, in terms of, of the, the, the guidelines or the, the work specifications of these commissioners, that also needs to be expanded upon by CGE because I think it's, it's something that is fundamentally important that we need to, we need to get right um, at this stage. Thanks, Chair. Those were just the, the last two points. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Um, in fact, I was thinking of something about the CGE. Um, there was something that I wanted to raise with the CGE regarding their programs. But now I forgot. Okay, um, no, it's fine. I hope this was, this was it. We have, we have done justice now to our report. Can I get a mover and a seconder for the adoption of the report? Sorry, Chair. Yeah. Open can be seen. I look up and I was all boy. I love how glad the school manga. Don't put my own after report. Okay. After report, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Can I get a mover and for the adoption of the report, Honourable Masiko? Chair, I move for the adoption of the report with the amendments that have been made. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Nobo. Uh, <laughs> Kulum. No, Chair, we will reserve the right. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Honorable. 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 Honorable Sengwa? Mam Sengwa? I support the adoption of the report. I support thank it. You. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, our report uh, for budget vote number 20.
uh, has been adopted. Uh, let's move to the next uh, item. Kashiva? Yes, Chair. Yes. We have moved, for, we have adopted the report with the reservation of uh, 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 the DA. Yes, Chair. Um, we've noted all the additional comments and input. Um, I will go through the report one more time and then um, send it to you just to make sure that we've captured ex exactly um, as per the discussions today before it's sent for ATC. Okay. All right. Mam Sonti? Chairperson. Yeah, let's move for the adoption of the report. The reserve, Chair. Okay. Oh, with the e reservation at EFF. Thank you very much. Kashifa? Uh, yes, Chair. Mm. We're done with the report now. Yes, we are. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So let's get to the, the the statement that we wanted to make. We want the draft statement for alcohol. Um, just one, one Do you moment. have written it? You have it, honorable members? No, Che. I'm still waiting for Kashifa to send it to me, Chair, because she sent me the wrong statement. Yeah, we don't have it. You have that one that has passed. Oh, let me, let, let me give you the background to what we were saying. Yesterday, okay. when uh, 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 it was the first, ne? Yes. and then uh, there's an upliftment of the, the alcohol that, uh, starting from the first day, uh, people can buy alcohol uh, from the first during the week but not weekends ne? and people cannot go and drink in the taverns or in the discos or in the clubs but what we, we saw yesterday with the staff uh, is that the way people were so happy that uh, alcohol is a thing is to draw a lot we are telling you so much they were even singing so our concern uh, with the staff members was that uh, you know, some of the people who was, were singing for alcohol were not saying but what our concern is the things that happen after Abantu did. And uh, the other thing was that uh, we were concerned that uh, we are hoping that most of the people who were dressing there, it's not people who took the money for grant and go and buy alcohol with that money. In relations to issues that gender-based violence. Mm. I'm gonna get up, okay. Issues that gender-based violence. Abu Mama by a shy, Abu Mama by a rage, Abantuana by a shy, Abantuana by a rage, and Abantu they believe Puzuchuala more than Octemu Gulda. It's a concern. You know, Abantu they don't maintain their children. Yes. But much of the Lugotemu Juan. Yes. Abantu they always complain, Gutabana Mali, this and that. But for getting Uchwala, the way back from back to my corner, you know, it took for me and the staff members who were sharing our views to say, no, but this is abnormal. It's like our people, but at Uchwala, it's something that is most important for their lives instead of being worried about their health. So um, we we're very, we we're very disturbed on what we were seeing yesterday. So uh, this is the draft that we have done. 
but it increases my risk of of injury. Number accidents, you know. Yes. Now, but when they call, they were no accidents. Oh, number accident. Amanini. Ah, and necessary due to negligence. No good. Aban to bad And yes. Eh, best man number cases. Amanini. Oh, good. Aban abo abo mama ba shy we makaya and so on. Eh, but now. Uh, with this thing, you would see, but now let's a corner. Yeah, challenge. Uh, with Tina, we are the ones who are more worried. Oh, see, Abandwana, a manje, so we need your input, yeah, well, because Abanye mentality, he bends a good tea and as Bashany, so, so, um. You can make your inputs, honorable members. Mam Sonti. Thanks, Chepetsi. Um, My input is that um, I'm out. Um, I, I, I don't agree with the decision uh, from President ne? to allow this opening of alcohol during this COVID-19. Because a chairperson, Uchwala, the people pose a band even during this uh, two last uh, levels. The people pose a band to Uchwala, but the people pose the soika the sonipa because there were regulations but we but now masa be buvulela ngoku utshwala be buvulela authi ukuthi mabuphuzwe abasahlaniphi sebephuza nje phambili kwethu bayacula abanambeko balibala even ezo mask ukuzifaka ebusweni ukuzipreventa abasahlambi izandla yazi nje chapesin abunantu ahamba kakhe this morning this morning, Chapasin, Umfana Uvale, Indian Bazana, we cheek and the whole night. A club we shy away Kiela. In us, in us, as we bet Hile, Gelabayochala. I've got those pictures. No, some part of my brother, which are linking our pillows in the end. The first good in the year because I get a new fume, Umbusimame, a better Chapunyas in Dot and Yendaba in my lily, the first Tikaka, Kachun, Wakufulo, Chuan. So I not agree with this uh, thing here, level through Kuti, Makufulo, Chuan, La Chapesi. Zimunjenga <laughs> Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Tell you so. Oh, okay. Um, yes, at last I'm in. Oh, okay. Okay. No, thank you. Chair. And uh, I was struggling to connect a uh, check in. Greetings, uh, honorable members. Okay. Greetings to you too. Uh, on the statement, Chair. I think uh, we must agree that uh, as a nation, we are in embarrassment. You know, while our kids can't go to school, but the same parents can chew for liquor or alcohol. And we must, you know, also, we must also note that drunkness knows no color. If you can follow social media, you know the noise shows that drunkness has no color. But however, you know, I think 
our people or our uh, the South African citizens must act responsible as well as uh, you know I, I will agree with so that I thought that you know the easing of um, alcohol will be in the level two if not level one because there are a lot of things happening now in our communities. You know, now that alcohol has been uh, uh, eased. But however, we must be harsh and uh, request, you know, that was, uh, our citizens to act responsible during this lockdown. But uh, at the end, uh, I think the statement has captured all the issues and uh, I, I support the statement as it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Honorable, Honorable Masiko. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I think, Chair, we must thank uh, your, 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 your good self and your leadership in, 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 in providing this, this, this statement in, or in drafting the statement. I think, Chair, as a committee, it was necessary for us to, to, to draft it, especially because we know the impact of alcohol on our women. I do, however, feel, Chair, that um, the issue for us of gender-based violence is not really coming out strong. I, I would wish for a strongly worded statement well it, it, it is but maybe we, yeah. we 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 do have a, a strongly worded par paragraph on mm. the impact of of alcohol uh, on women as it relates to gender based violence mm. and the risk the risky sexual behavior that it brings along with which also increases a, 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 a exposure to HIV and AIDS. Maybe we should add a bit of a, a paragraph chair that focuses on this. And as as a committee, we do we we, we are very very concerned with 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 with, with the, the, the generally South Africa is a drinking nation, chair, and we think that government should have beyond COVID nineteen a response that 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 addresses alcohol abuse in South Africa. Thanks, chair. Yeah, I think you're correct. Uh, we need to draft a stronger message on the issues of GPV and violence and femicide. Yeah. Okay. Um, any comments? Chair Mpiti. Okay, Honorable Mpiti. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I, I have not received the statement. Um, I've, been, I've been checking my personal email and my, my other account. But what I did want to 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 maybe add, um, not to the statement, but to the the conceptualization of 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 the idea in which uh, the statement has been put, um, is that some people do have addictions uh, to drinking, and I think it's very important for us to be able to acknowledge the fact that there are alcoholics who cannot just quit. Um, you know, just randomly. Uh, and so I think we need to also be cognizant of the socioeconomic issues that exist within our communities, particularly with the fact that people are alcoholics, people have a disease um, that they need help with. So I think it's very important to to, to remember that. As to the, the point of um, the banning or not, um, I think, you know, there's on both sides, there's strong arguments to to you know, to either not support uh, alcohol being sold or alcohol uh, um, being not being sold. But I think the most important thing for us to... It's, to, it's, uh, to uh, let's take... Uh, you know what? The banning, it's, it's no longer going to assist us. Ne? Uh, what is... Uh, it's, it's unbanned. But it, 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 uh, there are terms and conditions that are made, are provided, that uh, how must it be consumed and how must it be uh, 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 sold, sold uh, sell to our communities but the problem and the problem that we must raise is the manner in which our nation is treating alcohol as if it's a very nice thing 
and uh, Tina, as, as the portfolio committee, we are more concerned of the um, the after drinking what happens. Yes. So that's what we need to express. Uh, 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 I'm sure as a country we need to find a way on how how do you make it? I don't know. I don't know. That's why I need your, your opinion here before we send one out. Masiko is saying we must send out a strong message on Iguchi, how it, 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 it impacts on gender-based violence and femicides. And then we said it in, in terms of, in relation to Ama, Amama accidents, um, uh, in, in relation to... Because it is 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 yeah, taking into consideration, uh, Honorable Pete, you are right. There are people who are, who are addicted uh, to alcohol. Abanya bantungeke was a survivor without Ujoala, but we must find a way of crafting uh, uh, statements that we don't uh, seem like uh, uh, we are taking rights of those who, who, who like drinking alcohol. Am I understood? Chaperson. Mandega. Che, figile as well after honorable Mandule. Okay. Person. Okay. Sister Joyce. Sister Joyce. Thanks, Chair. Chair, um, we, we are actually in Youth Month currently. As a committee, we have not received the concept document for Youth Month and we are not aware what the department has planned or the National Youth Development Agency. So we request the committee secretary to request for, for, for the documentation from um, NYDA and the department. Secondly, Chair, I think um, uh, we should also have a statement as, as, as a committee on, on Youth Month, since we are a committee of women, youth, and persons with disabilities. Thanks, Chair. Okay, can you, can you, all, can you draft, uh, all of you who are youth here, can you draft something so that uh, we can add to it? Thanks, Chair. We, we had also requested for the theme for this year from the department, and they, they have not um, actually finished us with uh, with the necessary theme for the year 2020. Thanks, Chair. We, okay. we, we shall do so. Thanks. Okay. I'm so uh, thank, thank, Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. And I'm going to go to the department. I'm going to go to the I ingenanga apaglo level three. Ngoba si sasanga bezane na le virus. Efuna okokba si skachalele. Uchilo no monga meli wati isesante nzetu. So ngo uchwa la bulibasi sa yonke indo ulibala yonke indo. Ukab sungu kenga ba akulumanga ba umistem piti ona replen piti ati a basa kono kusala na pande kuamu kodo ake. Isi fosona sizo pebe tega spege pambili ngenda ba yocho ala. Yeah, I'm sure we must raise our concerns in terms of issues of safety and uh, adhering to um, uh, COVID-19 regulations on how people must behave and uh, all of us in wearing of masks, was, washing of hands, uh, social distance. I'm sure those are the things that we need to also uh, to mention which it's important for our our, our 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 communities, all of us, which we must adhere to those regulations so that we can we avoid 
uh, we, it, we, it, look, Jane, the spread of COVID. Um, yes, no, it's important. I think it's important that one. Okay, uh, thank you very much, honorable members. If there's any one of you that I've missed uh, in my screen, or Bigafun Gwenza, I input my apologies uh, due to our time. It's already six o'clock. Uh, you have the, the the final version of the report. Uh, thank you very much for attending this meeting. The meeting is urgent. Thanks, Chair. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Chair. Thank Bye. you, Chair. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Mama. Bye.